Airflow 2.0 is out. How it works, what can you do with your DAGs, what are the new features in order to answer all of those questions, you need to install and run Airflow on your machine. What is the easiest and fastest way to do that? Indeed, with Airflow 1, we had to run all of those commands. Airflow DB init, install the Python 3.6, create the user, install pip, too many things to do just to get Airflow up and running. Well, in that video, we're gonna discover the easiest and fastest way to do that by using Docker. My name is Mark Lamati, I'm the head of customer training at Astronomer, and I'm a best-selling instructor on Udemy, and during the next five minutes, you are going to discover how to install and run Airflow 2.0 with the Celery Executor by using Docker. Oh, and by the way, in two seconds only, you can subscribe to my channel. This will help me a lot, and this will make you a master of Airflow. Now you have subscribed, without further ado, let's get started. Without further ado, let's get started. The first step is to install Docker and Docker Compose. Indeed, as we're gonna run Airflow with Docker, you have to make sure that Docker is installed on your computer. So you just need to go to docker.com and then choose either Mac, Windows, or Linux according to your operating system. And once you have Docker installed, you are ready to install Docker Compose. Docker Compose allows you to run multi-container applications, which is exactly the case with Airflow. Indeed, Airflow has at least three components, the web server, the scheduler, and the metadata base. And since we're gonna use Celery Executor, we will have more components. But keep in mind, you have to install Docker Compose, and you can go to docker.com slash compose, as shown right there, and then install Compose by following the instructions. Once you have Docker Compose installed, you are ready to move on the Airflow part. First, let's create a new folder called airflow-docker. Then inside that folder, we are going to download the Docker Compose file describing all the services needed by Airflow. And the Docker Compose file has been already made for us by the Airflow community. So let's type curl dash L, F O, and this very long URL that you can find in the description below. Hit enter. Then if you type ls, as you can see, we have a new file, docker-compose.tml. Let's open a code editor. Type code dot if you use Visual Studio Code. Open the file docker-compose.tml, and let me give you a quick explanation about it. So first you have all common settings that will be applied to all services. You have the image of Airflow that we're gonna use, in that case, the latest image. Then you have some environment variables in order to customize the Airflow instance. First, we specify that the Celery Executor will be used. We specify the connection to the metadata base, which is Postgres. Same for the result backend, as we use the Celery Executor. The broker URL is Redis, and the broker is in charge of exchanging tasks, exchanging messages between the scheduler and the workers. Then you have the Fernet key, feel free to put a Fernet key if you want in order to encrypt passwords, and so on. Basically, if you want to customize your Airflow instance, you can create some environment variables right there. Next, we have the volumes, and the volumes are super important. Indeed, all the folders, DAGs, logs, and plugins will be synchronized between the containers and your host. So whatever you put inside DAGs, those files will be automatically synchronized in your containers. So if you create a new file, dag.py, and put that file into dags, that file will be automatically transferred into the Docker containers. Then we have the user. This is important to make sure that the permissions are the same between your containers and your machine. And then you can find the services. The services are all components needed by Airflow. First, the Postgres database, so the metadatabase of Airflow. Then we have Redis, the broker, Airflow-web server, running on port 8080, Airflow-scheduler, the scheduler, Airflow worker in order to execute the tasks, Flower that you can find here, and we have Airflow-init. Airflow-init is a little service in charge of initializing your Airflow instance. As you might know, the first thing you need to do when you install Airflow manually is to run Airflow-db-init or Airflow-db-upgrade, and then create a user. Well, that's exactly what Airflow-init does for you. Airflow-db-upgrade is triggered first, and then a new user 
Airflow with the password. Airflow is created for you. Okay, now we understand what we have in that file. Let's create the folders, logs, DAGs, and plugins. So we can open a new terminal like that. Make sure that you are inside Airflow-Docker and let's create those three folders. So mkdir dot slash DAGs dot slash plugins and dot slash logs. Then you should obtain those folders, DAGs, logs, and plugins as shown right there. Next, if you're on macOS or Linux, you might need to export some environment variables in order to make sure that the user and group permissions are the same between those folders from your host and the folders in your containers. To do this, you can type echo dash e, two double quotes, airflow underscore UID equals to dollar, then two parentheses, id dash u, backslash n, airflow underscore did equals to zero, and you put it into a file called dot n. And this file will be automatically loaded by the Docker Compose file. If you open the file dot env, you should obtain a pretty similar output. The folders are created and the permissions are set. Now we can initialize our Airflow instance with the service Airflow init. To do this, you just need to type docker-compose up airflow-init. Hit enter. And this service is in charge of running Airflow DB init or Airflow DB upgrade, and then create the user Airflow with the password Airflow. That's exactly what you can see here from the output. So let's wait a little bit until it's done. Perfect, the upgrade is done and the admin user Airflow has been created as shown right there. So now the only last thing we need to do is to execute the command docker-compose up, hit enter. And as you can see, this command runs all the services that are specified in the Docker Compose file, the scheduler, the web server, the worker, Redis, and so on. So let's wait a little bit until the Docker containers are up and running. And if you want to check that, you can just open a new terminal and type Docker PS. With that command, you are able to check all the containers and you can see if they are up and running by looking at their status. Looks like the web server is healthy, as you can see right there. And we have other containers such as the Flower container, the Worker container, we have Postgres, Redis, and so on. Okay, so let's verify our F instance. Open your web browser, let's open a new tab and type localhost colon 8080. Hit enter, and you should land on this beautiful page. If you type Airflow, Airflow, we got Airflow 2.0 up and running using Docker with the seller executor in only five minutes. So that's how you can right now use Airflow 2.0 with the seller executor, so you can potentially execute as many tasks as you want and make your own experiments in order to discover the new awesome features of Airflow 2.0. All right, it's time for the bonus section. First, how can you interact with the Airflow command line interface? Well, it is pretty simple. The only thing you need is to go back to your terminal and execute the command docker exec, use one of the container IDs of your Airflow instance. So let's use the web server, for example, copy the container ID, paste it there, and then you can access the Airflow command line interface like Airflow, then version if you want to get the version of your Airflow instance. If you hit enter, as you can see, we get the following version. So the only thing you need in order to interact with your Airflow command line interface is to use Docker exec, then a container ID corresponding to the scheduler, the web server, or the worker, and then execute the command Airflow version or Airflow users or whatever you want to interact with from your command line interface. Now, what about the API? How can you interact with the API? Well, if you try to execute the command curl-x get, then http colon slash slash localhost colon 8080, then slash API slash v1 slash, let's say DAGs, so you want to list the DAGs, if you hit enter, as you can see, we get unauthorized. So how can we fix this? Well, open your file docker-compose.yml, 
Then right there, you have to create a new environment variable called airflow underscore underscore API underscore underscore auth underscore backend, two simple codes, airflow dot API dot auth dot backend dot basic underscore auth. So by specifying that backend, you will need to specify the username as well as the password of a user in order to interact with the API. By default, all requests made to the API are denied. So that's why we got unauthorized right there. So once you have specified this backend, save the file, restart your F instance with docker-compose done, and docker-compose up, perfect. Now our flow is restarted. Let's open a new terminal. And from there, if we type docker ps to check the containers, you can see that the web server is still starting. So we have to wait until it is healthy. Let's type docker ps again. All right, now it is healthy. So we can try the command curl dash x get, but this time, we specify dash dash user, then airflow for the username and the password airflow. Hit enter, and as you can see, we get the list of all DAGs. So that's how you can interact with the API, and that's how you can make some experiments with it. I hope you enjoyed that video. I've put a lot of work in it. So if you want to help me, the only thing I ask you in favor is to subscribe to my channel. This will help me a lot. Have a great day and enjoy. Effort to that room.